Hey there, today we're taking a look at the tricky Ryzen 5 5500U mini PC. Now this system I've been very interested in because looking at its price on Amazon, it has been one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest AMD mini PC you can find on the market right now. The chip inside here is of course the Ryzen 5 5500U and it is a chip that refuses to die. Its original incarnation really being the Ryzen 5 4600U that launched back in 2020. Now there are some key differences though we are looking at the same 6 cores 12 thread configuration with Zen 2. This time around the Ryzen 5 5500U has 7 GPU cores running at 1800 megahertz in comparison to the 6 cores running at 1500 megahertz on the original 4600U. The Ryzen 5 5500U really launched in 2021 as a refresh under a different title, but it has kept a long lasting lifespan since then since there are still systems hitting the market today that are rocking this specific APU and it has really seemed to have stood the test of time. Because of the fact that we're rocking 6 Zen 2 cores with hyper threading, we get a 6 core 12 thread system for what is just a little bit over $200. In terms of CPU capability, even though Zen 2 is is quite a few years old at this point, it is still quite competitive. In terms of its performance in Cinebench, it actually manages to get a score of 7137, which makes it a very competitive score at the price range that it's reaching, and it's not that far behind the higher-end Ryzen systems. For example, the 5600H in the B-Link SER5 managed to get a score of 8,000 on Cinebench, and the 5600U at 25 watts on the Ace Magician system actually managed to get a result of 8716. So while there is a gap there in terms of performance, it's not that far behind. And I think that for most tasks that you're going to try to do on a system like this, the CPU is going to be more than adequate. Now, another key aspect of an APU like this is, of course, the built-in iGPU, which is the Radeon 7 here. So that is seven Vega-based cores on this system running at 1800 megahertz. We'll take a look at how it performs in a variety of different games from different years just to get a general idea of where exactly a system like this ends up falling in terms of gaming capability. First up, I decided to try out Alien Isolation since it has a built-in benchmark. This is one of those games that is extremely atmospheric, and I was pleasantly surprised to see the result that we were getting at the ultra graphic settings. That's right, this is pretty much at the maximum that the game will support. We're able to do that at not a 60 FPS average, but a well above 30 FPS average. And this does mean that if we're willing to drop things down from ultra down to high or even medium, we're going to get a more than above 60 fps average out of this this is at the full 1080p resolution so here you can see we are actually able to play some AAA title at maximum graphics settings and still get a more than playable result now of course this is a AAA title from quite a few years ago at this point but it is still a fantastic game and it gives you a general idea of the time period of games that you're going to get to actually experience at a decent level the next title i wanted to take a look at was batman arkham knight partly because of the fact that it of course has a built-in benchmark but also because it did get announced that it is being released on the nintendo switch now this game with the lowest in-game graphics we do struggle to even get a consistent 30 fps average here with our one percent lows falling below that it's certainly going to be a playable experience and it's going to remind you of playing games back in the playstation 3 and playstation 4 era but it is going to be doable but it does show that not all AAA titles are going to be playable on a system like this even ones that are quite a few years old at this point because remember this chip itself has been around for quite a while now it just is a lot more capable than what you really would have expected and the fact that it's able to reach these low price points is really the biggest selling factor and of course if you're willing to drop things down to 900p the results that we get out of this are really impressive because now we are getting a fantastic level of performance all we did was drop the resolution we kept the graphics settings exactly the same which 
even at the lowest in-game graphics settings, the visuals are still really nice and you don't really feel like you're sacrificing much here, even with a lower resolution. And we're able to get a far more consistent experience here. But after trying a selection of games, what I really found is that around the 2014 to 2015 era of games is where this a is really able to keep up pretty decently well. As you can see here, Grid 2 is running with the ultra in-game graphics setting and the level of performance that we're getting is really really nice and consistent which is what you want to see for a racing game though it isn't a high fps of course if for a lot of these older titles if you're willing to drop down to the high or even medium graphics preset you can actually get a nice boost in performance and you're going to be able to get a very very nice and consistent experience overall as of course you can see here with grid 2 again most games from this era are going to be very playable on here things moving forward from there though we do start to see some struggles especially with with higher end titles. You certainly do have access to a wide variety of different titles that you're going to be able to play through perfectly fine and actually get a wonderful experience. It's just they're going to be quite a few years older now. Which isn't exactly a bad thing because you can find a lot of these titles for extremely cheap and you're able to actually start gaming without really having to shell out a lot of money. You can still experience titles that are still really fun to play. I think a lot of the times people hyper focus on just the most recent and the most up to date titles when there's still a collection of games out there that you probably have never played before that you're going to be able to run on a system that you can pick up for less than $200 in some cases. And honestly, for the most part, this is pretty huge. This wide assortment of titles from this specific era are really going to give you some great levels of performance. And even AAA titles are still going to be able to be a great experience. Now just be aware that once you start to get into more modern titles, things really start to struggle. A game that I've been playing a lot recently is Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, which it has been out now since 2020, but continues to just get constant updates. And it is one of those titles that actually has some pretty aggressive graphic settings you can adjust here. And you're able to get some pretty decent levels of performance out of this game while trying to play on here. But as you can see, you do have to make some pretty major sacrifices visually, but for a title like this that you can pretty much get addicted to it is some overall impressive results though in gigantic battles expect some issues with one percent lows and your averages are certainly going to start to struggle in general though if you're a fan of this series you're kind of already used to the jank of it all and the fact that you're even able to play the title on here is already pretty impressive and a lot of the more popular titles out there things like killing floor 2 payday 2 left for dead 2 valor Orange, CSGO, Dota, League of Legends, titles like that run more than adequately on here. You're going to be able to have a fantastic time, especially these lighter esports titles. And at the price point that we're seeing this, there really isn't anything else that competes with it in terms of overall price, at least from Intel. But it isn't going to be perfect with absolutely every title. Specifically, Unreal 4 engine titles really seem to struggle a lot, specifically in 1% lows. Here you can see in certain Emergency Standstorm, which is a title that I play pretty frequently, runs perfectly fine on my desktop. And at the lowest visual settings, it's not even that graphically demanding. And in terms of the average that we're getting, it's pretty decent, but the 1% lows seem to struggle pretty noticeably. And this seems to be something that carries over to most other Unreal 4 based titles. There seems to be just something about how the engine works that really does not play well with these APU systems. In general, though, it is one of the more noticeable problems problems, but it isn't an absolute deal breaker. A title like Monster Hunter Rise is able to run on here absolutely perfectly fine, which is of course a 2021 title though it did get an expansion in 2022. But this is a title that originally launched on the Nintendo Switch, so the fact that this is able to give us some pretty decent levels of performance at 1080p isn't really that impressive, though it at least does perform better at the average graphics settings than the Nintendo Switch did. Which again, not very impressive considering that the Switch is pretty much just made with a mobile processor that was already quite a few years old when it launched, let alone at this point. But considering Considering the state of games today, the fact that this is actually able to perform this well on a system like this is kind of a blessing, but we'll take the win.
So the 5500U is actually able to keep up pretty well in 2023, just in terms of giving you a wide variety of games that you can actually play. But this specific system is launching in a very, very busy market. While it is one of the most aggressively priced, where it regularly hits the $200 to sometimes even sub $200 price point, the price difference between a system with the Ryzen 5 5500U and one with the 5600U, or even a 50 800h isn't really that drastically different I'm talking about sometimes the difference between 20 dollars to 50 dollars to sometimes 80 or even 100 dollars in general though you are able to get some more performance for just a bit more money that said though it isn't groundbreaking levels of performance or anything like that and at the price point that this reaches it is competitive enough but there is a model that they have with this exact chassis that gives you the 5800 h and that's going to give you some nice increases in performance in terms of the cpu you're going to get a small little bump with the gpu as well so it's definitely something to consider when it comes to that in general though it's not a bad system for the price